This is the Road Report with Steve Milton. Presented by Hercules Tire. This is Road Report on Ticats Audio Network. In Winnipeg, I'm Steve Milton. Well, the Tiger Cats have their work cut out for them and then some on the road Friday night as they catch the Blue Bombers, who started dismally, on the rise again, especially on defense. Winnipeg, behind Zach Caleros, is looking for its first three-game winning streak of the season, coming off a couple of very big wins over the BC Lions, which has condensed the Western standings into the tightest they've been at this stage of the season in years. Meanwhile, the Ticats are looking to break a three-game losing streak as they try to keep the Toronto Argonauts and third place in the East within shooting distance. They need wins, many of them anyway, anywhere, even in Winnipeg, where they've lost three straight times and haven't won since the 2019 season. Today, we'll hear from Scott Milanovic on the several changes in the lineup, some to accommodate last game's head injuries to receiver Luther Hakanavanu and quarterback Taylor Powell and to receiver Tyler Ternoski, and some to reflect the arrival of new defensive special assistant Chris Jones and the release of defensive back Kenneth George Jr. And Milanovic says that with the changes on defense, he feels the offense has to take control of this game. He talks about that too. Bo Levi Mitchell who came off the bench in last weekend's debilitating to loss in Edmonton and started roughly before finding some rhythm and throwing for nearly 300 yards, talks about the red-hot Winnipeg defense and the necessity of staying out of second and long situations. Milanovic said the same thing after a walkthrough practice on Thursday morning. First, though, the lineup changes from last week when the Ticats were beaten 47-22 by the Elks. On offense, Mitchell, of course, is the starting quarterback, replacing Powell, who had replaced him against Edmonton. With Powell's sideline, Harris Frost moves up into the number two hold, and rookie Talia Tagu-Vailoa gets his first CFL game day uniform as the number three. Some might say that's a glimpse at the long-term future, but the short term is the only thing that matters now, especially when you're two and eight. Greg Bell, who had 173 yards from scrimmage, that's meaning uh, rushing and pass receptions, stays in at running back. And Brendan Bordner, who'd been injured or otherwise would have started last week, is back in at left tackle. That means the same two first-year Ticats, Bordner and uh, Quentin Barrow, who came out of training camp as the starting tackles in the wake of injuries to veterans, will start this game too. Canadian Brennan O'Leary Orange, who had four catches for 64 yards on opening night in Calgary before hurting his hamstring, makes his long-awaited return to the offense, and Desmond Patton also returns as a wide receiver. On defense, third-year Ticat Will Sunderland brings his six-foot-two reach into the starting lineup at fieldside cornerback, while linebacker Ray Wilburn has been put on the practice roster. With Canadian Benoit Marion back in the lineup, the Ticats will dress nine defensive linemen for this game. Now, to me, that's an indication that Hamilton will try to constantly pressure future Hall of Famer Caleros in a variety of ways, but throughout the game, trying to take advantage of a Winnipeg offensive line that is still strong, but not as impenetrable as it once was. So there's a need to keep the front line fresh for the full 60 minutes. On special teams, Jordan Bird out of San Diego State, who was released by the Argos in the final cuts of training camp, will be the returner, while Carthel Flowers Lloyd, who led the league in special teams tackle last year, goes to the one-game injured list. The Bombers, meanwhile, will be missing superb linebacker Adam Big Hill and have inserted former Ticat linebacker Bailey Feltmate at fullback. And after missing the first eight games, electric receiver Kenny Lawler returned last week against BC, got his feet wet, and provides Calaris with yet another target to go along with a danger-laden likes of Nick Dembski, Ontario Whistlin, and Lucky Whitehead. So this game features two surefire Hall of Fame quarterbacks in Mitchell, who still leads the league in passing yardage, and former Ticat Caleros, who always finds a way to get things done, especially in the fourth quarter and especially in Winnipeg. He's 25-4 and four in his 29 regular season home starts since joining the Bombers. But it's the defense which has turned the Bombers' season around. The Ticats, who've had a bad habit of falling behind early, would be facing a team which in the last three games has held the opposition scoreless in the first quarter and has allowed just one touchdown in 42 possessions. That's some kind of defense. Led by defensive end Willie Jefferson, in the last four games, they've allowed an average of 11.5 points per game. Scott Milanovic on facing a resurgent Winnipeg defense. Well, I don't know that they've been playing not well on defense at any point in the game, to be honest with you. I think they're leading the league in red zone. They might be uh, might be leading the league in second down. They're just, they're just good. They're good on defense, and they got good scheme. JY is doing a great job uh, make putting his stamp on, on, on what they've done in the past, and they got good players. Um, great challenge for us. Great challenge for us, especially, obviously, with uh, the change defensively. Um, 
I think it puts a big onus on on us offensively to really have our best game and uh, take some pressure off them, uh, hopefully get them a lead and, and uh, slow the game down a little bit. The Bomber defense could bring a lot of different looks, but they're particularly de devastating on second and long, often using three defensive ends to force early and unwanted decisions by the quarterback. And to me, the antidote to that includes running back Bell swinging out of the backfield and quick, accurate tosses to height receivers. But the primary, if oversimplified, counter is to stay out of second and long situations. Milanovic says that's the main answer, and his quarterback seconds that notion. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's I mean, that's every defense. Like, if you look at any percentage of any down and distance, second long is obviously going to be the lowest for conversion rate. Um, you know, they're particularly good at it. They've got a lot of good players that have been in the league for a long time, and, and the young guys seem like they're really coming to their own now, you know, here in you know, week 10, 12, whatever it is. Um, you know, second long is always a tough situation. It's one of those where it's, you know, hey, do you take a one-on-one -on -one shot? Do you try to check it down and see if a guy can break a tackle and get to a, you know, third and one, third and two situation? Is there anything in their second long coverage you can exploit to get first downs, right? There's always, that's what you're trying to do when you're watching film. Um, so that's obviously the things we've looked at, you know, that's what you look at with every single team. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think they're very good at it. And the biggest thing, just try not to get into those situations, right? Like be successful on first down, be smart with the football. They thrive off turnovers they have for a long time. You know, their offense, they're not trying to, you know, always go out and score 50 points. Like they like to control the game. They'll take the shots that are there, but uh, they play the game to win the right way. And um, so on offense, we got to make sure we're doing the same. The return of O'Leary Orange is timely, given the forced absence of Hakanavanhu, who had been playing extremely well, and the underrated Turnowski. Milanovic liked what he saw from O'Leary Orange in the opener before his injury and would like to see more of the same on Friday night. Yeah, just just that. I mean, he played physical. He played fast. Showed no fear, catching the ball over the middle. Um, I want him to do all those things and then stay healthy. Now, last week, all four games were won by the road team. Unfortunately, that included Edmonton over Hamilton. But perhaps the Thai Cats can take something from that league trend. And there are some other league trends they need to emulate. Teams are starting to make more and more game-turning plays on defense. And the Ticats have only four interceptions on pace for the fewest in club history. Now that's a knee bone connected to the thigh bone situation as more pressure up front can help defensive backs cover more tightly and recognize when to take their chances. But we also have to be acutely aware, as Milanovic mentioned, that there is a new defensive coordinator who has had only a few days to work with this group. Here's another league trend. 19 games have been decided by four points or fewer already as many as last year. So things like turnovers, penalties, and allowing and preventing big plays can all make a difference over 60 minutes. So given that he feels the offense has to carry things, what does Milanovic want to see from his quarterback? And it'll never change. He needs to protect the football and make good decisions. All those other things, I think, come naturally with him. The explosive plays, uh, the big throws, the highlight reel stuff, but to win games, we've got to protect the ball and make great decisions. To underscore that, the Ticats have fallen 15 or more points behind in six of their eight losses and are 0-7, repeat, 0-7 when they trail after the first quarter. Now, just one more league trend here, and it relates to a change in the Ticat lineup. Teams with the overall edge and field position are a combined 27 wins and 16 losses across the league this year. So, yes, kick coverage and the return game are hugely important. The Ticats have been okay at the former and dismal at the latter partly because of penalties, partly because of execution issues on a tier or two of the blocking waves, and partly because three different primary returners haven't been punishing enough. So Jordan Bird, who was twice named all-conference returner when he was at San Diego State, gets his turn. Milanovic on Bird. I mean, I'm still waiting to see too, right? Uh, he catches the ball well, uh, kind of has a running backs mentality out there. And, and by that, I mean... He, he doesn't need a gaping hole. You know, he's going to see the little creases, we hope, um, and just hit them. And uh, looking forward to see, uh, see how he does when the lights turn on. And finally, back to the defense, the dominant story in Hamilton this week. They'll be challenged not only by a great receiving core and Calaris's creative distribution, but by running back Brady Oliveira, who's carried the ball 40 times in the last three games for 274 yards. That's nearly seven yards per rush and has run for what the CFL regards as a big play. That's uh, on the ground. That's 10 or more yards. He's done that eight times in those three games. 
That got me wondering who Milanovic considers the main key to stop in order to limit the very controlled offense of the streaking bombers. No, it's it's Zach. It's, it'll always be Zach. Now, they're, let's not take anything away from Brady and their offensive line, but Zach makes that offensive go the way he handles the Sally game and the zone reads and all those things and his ability to create when it's not perfect. They do a great job of staying ahead of the sticks and, and not letting themselves get into second and longs where you can come after them. But um, as good as Brady is, I, I will always think that uh, Zach makes that team go. Okay, Chris Jones and company, there's your assignment. Not an easy one for your first game, but nothing's easy at this time of year. And that's it for Road Report from Winnipeg. Thanks to every one of you for investing your time with us. And please join us for a full Friday on the Ticat Audio Network. RJ and Luke for the game broadcast and our kaleidoscope of pregame and postgame shows and analyses, which run all day and evening. This has been the Road Report with Steve Milton, presented by Hercules Tire. Go to TieCats.ca for more in-depth coverage of the Tiger Cats at home and on the road.